Jack. Jack. <laughs> the, one the one thing I did try to get the time ago, the one thing I didn't notice <laughs> about the Olympics was that boxers talk the same whatever part of the world they come from. It's true like in England we've got Frank Bruno go, Well, you know, I mean Harry. <laughs> I went in the ring, Harry, you know what I mean? I was moving and everything, Harry, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, Harry, this geezer bloody hit me, you know what I mean? And I couldn't believe it, Harry, you know what I mean? If I didn't know it was going to hit me, I wouldn't have got in there, Harry, you know what I mean? And the American comes on and goes, Wow. Well, I went in the ring, Harry. I went in the ring. I went in the ring, Harry. Harry. I was going to Harry, I was going, I was going, I was going, I was going, damn. Harry, and the dude hit me so hard, my brain came out of my nose. And even the Japanese one, he's the same, he comes on and goes, Dugo, 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 Harry, Dugo, 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 Thank you. I'm here just to give you a quick update on the test between the NUM and the coal board, which is uh, turning out to be the longest test in picketing history. The uh, main tactic at the moment is the NUM are trying to get themselves out, and the coal board are trying to get them in, which is uh, proving more difficult than getting a Bondi surface wedding tackle into a swimming togs. <laughs> but there on the coal field, it's a cold, hard picket without much give on either side. The coal board have made a lot of quick deliveries, most of them getting past the picket. Individually, Arthur Scargill has been scoring well off his own bat, presenting Ian McGregor at City Mid-On with a lot of good chances. But uh, he dropped them all, and finally Thatcher the captain sent him back to the pavilion. Good effort that I thought. So the score so far is the NUM with about 110,000 all out, and the coal board at 73,000 declared, and they're declaring something different every day. <laughs> so there it is then, everything to play for, and this happened. So, when's it due? Oh no, I've had it already. What? The money. They paid in advance. <laughs> 7,000 pounds. So you're a... Uh... Mm, surrogate mom. <laughs> a womb with a view. <laughs> Gosh, how is the little treasure? In the building society. No, I know. And Derek. Derek is already converting the attic. Oh, into a nursery? No, luxury sauna come jacuzzi. Ooh. We've got some time on our hands after we're shot of the little bugger. Mm. We have to go to classes every week now. Antenatal. Business studies. <laughs> I bet you wake up in the night with a burning desire for gherkins and yoghurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, just money. <laughs> You seem to care much about the baby. Don't be silly, of course I do. It's a thousand pound bonus on delivery. Hmm. What are you hoping for? A girl or a boy? Triplets. <laughs> Evening, Groovers, and now for a political summary from the dreadlocked Mr. Fred Dredd. I am afraid that the state of the nation is giving no cause for celebration. Nobody digging coal, everybody on the dole. It's like a football team with a blind man in goal. He can't see the state of play because he's facing the wrong damn way. Well, that's a very good analogy, which, to be quite frank, I don't see. So let me turn to a Tory MP who happens to be sitting next to me. No U turn, no change, the same old tune. Upturn in economy expected quite soon. Unemployment going down, pound riding high. Stick with Maggie, baby, see pigs fly. Mr. Dredd, what is your response to that? I think the man is a brat. <laughs> because the government's economic strategy has got more holes than Meccano. And the pound is sinking faster than the Belgrano. Look, that's a lot of bills. Now let me turn to the unemployed. 
You once said they should all be destroyed. Yeah, I really didn't mean the whole lot. Just the ones who don't have a job. And those that the country doesn't need could be recycled into animal feed. <laughs> well, an interesting suggestion. Now let's move on to another question. What about the NHS? Why is it in such a mess? Because they're killing it to death! Look, that's not strictly true. They won't keep costs down. And if the transplant surgeons shopped around, they find, find kidneys in Tesco's at 20 pence a pound. <laughs> 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 Is that the only remedy is amputation? And if you had a big boil on your ear, then call it off. A bold ear. I say, wait a minute, I'm just a politician. Because they've got too much ambition. And my whole team will make them a winner. They come around and take away your dinner. And when you hear a standing ovation, you're going to get a right situation. Love it! Oh, God! Oh, the 
Prohibition's gonna make us rich. But the Charlie, Prohibition's been dead for 20 years now. You better than the stars. Don't you believe it? That's just a cover. We got gambling, prostitution. I can have a shot at the title, you know, we only got a couple of extra pills. Narcotics, dirty magazines, instead of a one-way ticket to the Ruka Canal. I tell you, the judge is here. The police chief is here. Where do you keep the politicians? Right here. Is that cheese on both burgers with extra mayo and fries? No. We're trying to get money, and we're willing to shake it off by every machine. Do I go to the cops or what? Yeah. Why is that, Terry? Go to the cops. Otherwise, you'll never be able to live with yourself. But I don't want to live with myself. I want to live with Evie. Have kids. Get a busy, please. You don't want to go to the cops, Terry. Just take the dough and pick up a hooker in Central Park. Hey, that's not such a bad idea. No! You gotta go to the cops, and you gotta go back to work. You go back to work, Terry. I'll kick your head. If I go back to work, Terry, they kick my head in. Terry, you look cheap. How come I tell me I'll cheat if I ain't got a head? Listen, what are we standing around doing for, man? We've got to go take your job here. We've got to get a wicked whoop them. Because they're all over the backstabbers. Cause the smile on your face, all the time you want to take the place of backstabbers. Backstabbers. The smile on your face, all the time you want to take the place of backstabbers. Backstabbers.
today as I look over the White House lawns at the start of this new year, I want to bring you a message, a message of hope, a message of peace. You know, I believe in peace and goodwill and understanding. And this is why, as a peacemaker, at this time of peace, my message to all of you fellow peace-loving Americans is simply this. Bomb the commie bastards and let's get it over with. <laughs> you know, we Americans want peace more than most people realize. You want a piece of Nicaragua? You want a piece of El Salvador? And you want a piece of the Middle East to go with the bitch we already own? And it's to the Middle East that I now turn. You know, I don't pretend there's a simple answer to the problem of the Middle East. If there was, we'd have dropped it on them by now. <laughs> Even if it meant killing lots and lots of innocent human beings. Or Arabs. <laughs> and on that subject of nuclear war, I would like to turn to all our many friends over there in the state of Europe. You've asked me the straight question. Is the peace-loving American nation prepared to sit back and watch Europe being destroyed by the nuclear holocaust? Well, let me give you a straight answer to a straight question. Yes. <laughs> yes, because what we Americans believe in is more than just an ideology. We believe in cars that are bigger than everyone else's and make a nice squeaky sound when they go around corners. <laughs> we believe in a form of spelling that misses out all those tricky, difficult letters no one notices anyway. And we believe in a constitution that says a man is innocent, providing he can pay enough money to prove it. <laughs> you know, Nance and I joined together today to bring you this New Year message of peace. And I hope sincerely, with my hand on my heart, both cheeks out, that this year will bring peace and joy to one and all, except for those pink old lefty reds. I hope we blow those goddamn camel impersonating liver skin commutators off the earth faster than a fart through a pair of stringy underpants. Happy New Year, suckers. And I'm gonna say it just one more time. You ain't seen nothing yet. Gentlemen, for the first time, Jennifer Saunders would like to present her new band. They are the new Wham. Please give a warm hand for Raw Sex. And no photographs, please. Yes. I'm 27. And I'm a bit fed up of being on your comedy yacht scheme, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> you were reminded 
get paid, paid for instance. <laughs> when, when you're funny. funny. Um, <laughs> that's the truth of it, isn't it? Anyway, anyway um, my, my band... band um, well, maybe if I just got the chance to be funny, I'd be like, I need a chance to be funny. If you've got something for the ladies and gentlemen of the house? Hmm? If you've got something for the lovely ladies and gentlemen? Uh, well, well, I've, I've, got, I've got, got a song. Well, let's hear the song. Let's hear the smashing song. We'd love that, wouldn't we? Yes. Let's hear the lovely oh, smashing great. song. Great. Well, um, there are a couple of props here um, for this song. I'm so happy to be able to do this for you. Um, Jen, if you'd like to wear this hat and uh, play this penny whistle. Thank you. And uh, boys, would you like to put on your musical comedy hat? Lovely, lovely. And Dwayne, would you play the tabor, please? Thank you. And uh, Ken, can you play the guitar, Ken? Not really. <laughs> How quickly can you learn to play the guitar, Ken? Yes, thank you very much. Right, um, just put my hat on. Now then, um, this is a sort of um, folky kind of song which I've written myself. <laughs> very, very much have the chance to do. <laughs> Because I was going to Camden Town all on a market day. A pretty little Camden lad I met upon the way. His business was to market with butter and pie. We both drove there together, my boys. Father, I did all day. We both drove there together, my boys. Father, I did all day. As we drove there together, my boys are sitting side by side. I espied this fair lad's trouser flies, by chance they came untied. For <laughs> fear that he might lose them, I unto him did say, Your flies they are untied, my lord, father I diddle all day. <laughs> As we drove on together, my boys, to the outskirts of the town, at length this fair young gentleman, he stopped to look in around. Oh, since you've been so venturesome, please zip them up for me. I will if you go to the apple grove. Father, I did all day. It's a bit cheeky here, man. Yeah. Father, I did all day. Right, there's only 20 more verses. <laughs> And when we got to the apple grove, the grass was growing high. I laid this chap upon his back, his flies for to untie. While fastening of his flies, there's some sights I never did see. We both jumped on together, my boys. Father, I did all day. And straight we fell a bonking, a bonking long and hard. My love juice was unleashed, and we had need of lard. Cause there was many a jolly one as I did smile and moan. We gave it some trombone, my boys. We gave it some trombone. We gave it some trombone, my boys. We gave it some trombone. A bit naughty. And when we got to market with butcher cheese and whey, no hippie wanted to purchase them, for they had melted away. So homeward to his parents, father, I did all day. So homeward to, oh no, they've had to go. They've had to go. What a shame. What a shame. It's a shame, because there's only another 12 verses. And oh no, it's a musician's union, you see. <laughs> they've only played for three minutes and they have to go and have a drink in the bar. <laughs> Oh, he was going to lose his maidenhood yes. in the next one. And we'll see, we'll see. Yes. Still, it doesn't matter really, because I shouldn't think the audience could quite believe their ears then, could they? <laughs> I shouldn't think you've heard a song like that for hundreds and hundreds of years, have you? Hundreds and hundreds of years. I shouldn't think you could quite believe your ears, so it's very good to get embarrassed occasionally, I hear. It's very good to get hideously, horribly embarrassed by something that's so terrible occasionally, I hear. <laughs> you say sorry, Dawn. <laughs> Apologise. Apologise now. I'm sorry. Louder. I'm sorry. And to me? I'm sorry, Your Royal Highness. Thank you. <laughs> you got some video television you'd like to put on now, Paul? <laughs> now, the latest secret among many embarrassing secrets to be leaked from Whitehall is that the government is considering starting the manufacture of chemical and nerve gas type weapons. To answer these accusations, I have with me a spokesman from the Ministry of Defence. Uh, can you tell me, are these accusations true? 
Absolutely not. <laughs>
to have tonight World of Danger as we take you on a murky trip through the twilight world of Dante's Towering Inferno! Ha ha! Towering Inferno! Marcel the Petrol! <laughs>
to kill you, would I? Because I could grant him sexual favours. <laughs> sexual favours I got strawberry, lime, and grapefruit. Ah, that's sexual flavours. I meant favours. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello, Mr. Hitman. If you pull off the head of Richard Dangerous, I will promise never, ever, ever to get into your bed and do squidgy things with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I won't kill you, buddy. I won't pull off your head. Hello, <laughs> oh, good luck, sir. Yes, thank you. One a small step for Sir Adrian. One giant leap for Richard Bakerhand. <laughs> one a nothing charity job. I just have to take this opportunity to say a few words about the people who have been influential in my career. <laughs> physical comedy there and if you want to know how long it's taken to perfect that routine here's Jerry Desmond and Sid Field trying it out for the first time in 
most things But I don't go for that I was crazy away sending ours to Finland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a lady who's on her first visit here to England. Will you please welcome, direct from the New York comic strip, Miss Abby Stein! Thank you so much. This is wonderful. I am having such a great time here. My first time in London. Oh, I love it. You people are so nice. You're so hospitable. I mean, not that New Yorkers are nice. We are, but it's a little bit different mentality. I work in New York a lot, and people are very sweet. They come over to you after the show. They say things like, you're really a pissy, you know that? <laughs> here, it's a little bit different. Somebody came over to me last night after the show and said, Maya, I enjoyed you immensely. Might I take you home and give you a bath? <laughs> a little too hospitable. I just got an apartment in New York and I'm living in one of these 10 flight walk ups, which is cool. I figure it's good exercise. I figure two weeks on these stairs, I'll be down to my original weight seven pounds, three ounces. <laughs> uh, not a good neighborhood. I go into my bank the other day. You all familiar with cash machines, 24 hour banking, computers? Mine is on the worst corner in New York City. Junkies live in the vestibule of the bank. I go in the other day to take out some money. I walk in, I put in my card, I press the button, the machine goes, I swear I'll have the money for you Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go furniture shopping. The apartment is very small. I did get a neat piece of furniture, though. I was looking for a convertible sofa bed, but I got something even better. I got a convertible water bed. It's great. It falls up into a toilet. <laughs> they need a space saver like this. Sometimes I get a little carried away with the shopping. The other day I bought something, boy, I really didn't need. I bought a wheelchair. 
<laughs> we left. At least I can get a parking space now. So <laughs> worked out all right. I do travel a lot in the states. I was working out in Los Angeles for a while, and I, I know you must have heard a lot of jokes about LA. They're all valid. I was out there. Everything out there is these trends and these fads that people get into. It's so bizarre. The latest thing everybody out there is into organic clothing. Does this make any sense to you at all? Organic clothing. So I'm out there thinking, what the hell? I'll go along for the ride. I go out and get myself a pair of these whole wheat jeans. I got a yeast infection. Um, this was disgusting. Oh, and I, I'll tell you what the real dream gig was. I worked in Las Vegas. Oof. Oh, I love to gamble. I love it. I sort of brought up with it. My parents used to play blackjack in bed. <laughs> At least it sounds that way. My father was always screaming, hit me! <laughs> I lost so much money last year playing cards. Finally, a friend of mine said, Jesus, Abby, you're losing so much money. Stop betting money. Just make mental bets. So now I'm losing my mind. And <laughs> so I am seeing a psychiatrist, which... I really recommend to all of you, it's a wonderful thing. Because you go in, you discuss your childhood, you find out how you got to be what you are. See, I felt very unloved as a child, which is probably typical, a lot of you probably felt that way. In my case, I think I had a reason to. When I was three, I fell down a bruised knee. My mother went to court to fight for my right to die. <laughs> I thought this was getting carried away. I was so screwed up, I used to wet my thumb and suck my bed. <laughs> But, you know, I wanted to discuss a, a particular problem. I, I guess I can share this with you because we're pretty close now. It was this whole relationship business. Now, my problem was I, I always had a thing where I was attracted to incredibly sleazy men. That's true. It's like if they gave me a choice between, say, a bank president and a crippled Puerto Rican. I went for Paco and the wooden leg, okay? He said, turn me, oh, you're not so innocent. You're not so innocent. I look around, a lot of single people out here. Right away, there's a problem. You don't always pick people who are good for you, right? You make a mistake sometimes. We've all had it happen. You meet somebody, you're incredibly sexually attracted to them, but the problem is they're like the most disgusting person on the face of the earth. And you think to yourself, gee, I would really love to sleep with this person, but only if I could shoot him in the head the next day. <laughs> because if he ever tells anyone I slept with him, I have to move off earth. It's, uh, oh, dating is very tough. I had dates uh, about five years ago. I meet a guy at one of these new wave clubs. You've been down to them, right? I met a guy. I met a punk Jew. Wearing sunglasses and a yarmulke. <laughs> With a safety pin through the yarmulke. We called him Shlomo Vicious. Now, <laughs> I, I don't want to alienate anyone in the room, but Jewish men, they're not the best lovers. Now, I've been out with a few, let me put it to you this way. Basically, Jewish guy's idea of oral sex is talking about himself. Uh, <laughs> something is missing here. We call it assault with a dead weapon. Now, <laughs> I tell you, usually, usually when I do that joke, some guy will come up to me and go, well, what about Jewish women? What about Jewish women? Now, I myself am a Jewish woman. <laughs> you probably didn't know that. <laughs> A lot of people mistake me for a Gentile cheerleader from the Midwest. So. <laughs> sure. But I think we've taken a bad rap, that's right. I don't think we're bad men, I think we're very good men, we're very adventurous, absolutely. In fact, they just did a study, truth, maybe you saw this in Cosmo. They found out that statistically, a Jewish woman's favorite position to have sex in is doggy style. You touch her, she rolls over, plays dead. <laughs> Oh, stop. It's not true. Please. I get very excited sometimes. Last week, lost my place in the crossword puzzle. <laughs> but you know what it is? We just don't have the reputation. You know who has the reputation? The Italians. Oh, oh, the Italians. The sexiest people in the world. Incredible. I finally figured out why, too. It's because they have just an incredible amount of hair all over their bodies. The men also. <laughs> when they're little, they play hide and go shave, and their voice is a little different. You grow up, you sleep with them, you have to vacuum the bed. It's a whole. <laughs> they they all very slick though. Even when we were little kids back in school, 
the Jews would elect a class president, the Italians would have him assassinated. <laughs> I was once in love with an Italian boy, a Sicilian, oof, they're so tough. I was madly in love with this boy, but I had to break it off, you know. I just couldn't see going down the aisles going, no pictures, no pictures. <laughs> But they, they are sexy, boy, they know how to talk to women, very romantic. Hey, honey. <laughs> they know how to get your attention. But it's all behind me now. I don't have to worry about any of it anymore, because I'm very happy to tell you that a couple of months ago I got married. And thank you. Um, it's wonderful. I'm so much in love. And he's very, very special. He's an Iranian midget mud wrestler. <laughs> Oh, and I, I like being married, but one thing he made me do I wasn't too pleased with. He made me sign one of these prenuptial agreements. Marriage contract? Terrible. Oh, it was so weird. We went down to the office to sign it, and he brought his attorney with him, and I brought my mother. <laughs> oh, so now, now if we get divorced, so I get the house, the car, the stock options. He gets a Three Dog Night album, <laughs> and an ashtray that says Nixon's the one. So... <laughs> I think it's equitable. I really have to start wrapping up here because it's getting late and I have to go shoot some heroin sleep with a very large black man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, stop. I'm a married woman now, and believe me, I don't date nearly as much as I used to. <laughs> but you have been wonderful. Thank you for making my trip to England so great. Good night. Abby's crying, brilliant. She'll be back soon. You know how they keep coining all these new expressions like new wave comedy, alternative comedy? Well, it's been around a lot longer than you think. And here's the Alexis sale of 1931, Sandy Powell and a very naughty joke. Uh, excuse me. Uh, but, uh, do you well believe in birth control? I beg your pardon? I say, do you believe in birth control? Yes. <laughs> This derelict area of London's dockland is mainly inhabited by nesting seabirds. One of the little miracles of urban decay. Yes. This bird population is, however, being decimated by a new form of pollution. Dr. Rudy Weiss... Uh, may I call you Rudy? Oh, please, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Rudy here has been making a study of the birds and their deteriorating environment. Yes, this backwater is chiefly used by the gannet, puffin, and brownback gull, but mm -hmm. recently the population has been falling at an alarming rate because of a new hazard, uh, condoms. Condoms? Yes, you know, I don't have a pack on me, but... Uh, uh, how are these, um... Uh, robbers. How are these... Uh, uh, devices... Right. ...affecting the birds? Well, it's like this. You see, they're left lying around by lovers, or they're flushed down the toilet, and when they emerge finally into the sea, the wonderful world of the sea. <laughs> yes. So, so what you're saying is the birds actually swoop down and eat them? Yes, some of the girls simply choke to death on them, but some of the smarter girls are actually using them. <laughs> yes, that's why the population is falling, so the Why, that's, that's fascinating. Um... So the birds are actually wearing the condoms? That's correct, yes. I had no idea they were so intelligent. Intelligent? No, they're very stupid. Why is that? They're wearing them as bad clavers. Send in the interviewee, would you? <coughs> no, I said... Never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need the windows cleaning today, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you... Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps, Perhaps tomorrow, eh? <laughs> I don't think, think we need to see tomorrow either, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that, then, isn't it? Shall I sit down? What for? For the interview. What interview? What interview? The interview for the job. job. Look, <laughs> we, we don't, don't have any jobs, jobs for window cleaners. cleaners. Well, well it's, it's a good, good job I'm not a window, window cleaner, cleaner then. It isn't it? <laughs> look, look, I seem to have, have a little misunderstanding here. Um, you see, I'm, I'm supposed, supposed to be interviewing somebody for the job of sales, sales representative. Mr. Wilson. Wilson. I'm Mr. Wilson. I'm Mr. Wilson. You're Mr. Wilson? Yeah. I suppose you're on the phone. You didn't sound... Shoot. 
we uh, get on it then? Yes, yes, right. Well, uh, it won't take very long, because obviously there are qualifications required for this job. Uh, like, O-levels. And then four. I've got six. <laughs> right, good. It's good. And then A-levels. Well, I've got three A-levels and fifteen. What? <laughs> very, very responsible job. This is all You might need a degree in philosophy to sell encyclopedias in Hampstead, but you do not need fifteen A-levels to the flop double blazing in Wapping. I try! I try. <laughs> Just my little joke. <laughs> well, well, you seem to have all the basic, basic qualifications. Uh, there is just one test I'll have to put you through before I can make my final decision. I would like you to fill in the missing word in the following phrases. OK, let's go. Bar, bar, sheep. <laughs> black. That's right. Seller, <laughs> black. Popcorn with a kettle? Black. Sheep of the family? Black. Decker? Double. <laughs> Sorry, I should have been black then. What? <laughs> <laughs> it means I'm afraid you haven't got, got the job. job. Right. <laughs> but it's <laughs> obvious. You're, You're too, too tall. tall. <laughs> I haven't got anything <laughs> against tall people at all, all right? In fact, some, some of my best friends are very, very tall. <laughs> and um, there's nothing wrong with tall people that a pair of slightly shorter legs wouldn't put right, but um. I'm afraid, I'm afraid this job's a big disadvantage. What is that? Well, uh, very, very low decks, decks, you see, and tall people, people they can't get their legs This is a dumb give me that! Give you what? All this too tall, God, but you make me sick. Sitting there with your beard, got stuff behind that desk, and then that job's like Mars bars. You know why I didn't get the job, why didn't you just admit it? All right! I admit it! It's because I'm black! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! You got that all wrong, didn't you? Yeah, well, I'm afraid you failed the managing director test. Um, but if you come back tomorrow, you can try for the immigration official. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, I'm all right. We're going to go for lunch. Listen, I'm sick of this. That's the 15th failed managing director. I'm supposed to be on the youth opportunity scheme here. Why can't I turn me on the desk? Well, I'm sick of it. 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 Well, I'm sick of it.
right there. And my dick, yeah? yeah. Have you had a good time? Yeah. Okay, I'm having a great time. Uh, mainly because my, my wife's in the uh, show tonight. Because yeah. I got married before Christmas. Yeah. It was great. I love being married. I was, yes, I did. <laughs> I was really scared that the press were going to make it. What? <laughs> Somebody heckling me. Yeah, I was going to do it pushing my pillow, but you beat me to it. Okay. <laughs> So, it's so nice being a comedian because words just go <laughs> And um, no, we didn't have to get married actually. I, I, I had to, but she didn't have to. <laughs> um, and it was, I was really scared that the press were going to make a mockery of it. You know, I had this horrible vision of waking up on the hood in the morning and seeing a head come out of the bed saying, Let me do it again, please. You missed that one. <laughs> And uh, Miss Stag Knight was horrendous because Miss Stag Knight's when all your best mates get legless and tell you what they really think of you, you know? Lel! <laughs> oh no, Lloyd! <laughs> Thanks. But uh, the wedding was great and I couldn't shave, I was covered with. <laughs> so I had this horrible vision of walking down the aisle covered in bog you know? <laughs> we, went, we went to Africa for the honeymoon, you know? Found my roots! Jumbo, hey, Jumbo, 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 the giraffes were brilliant because it's like they're stoned you know. <laughs> and they've got little antennas on their head it's like they're getting Radio 1 you know Radio 1 <laughs> and the, the best were the warthogs you know because they're like really ugly they've got long snouts and really muscular arms you know and they've got a long snout and they walk along like that and I thought they had medallions on they look like Mr. T you know <laughs> why are you doing so I don't care if you're on it forget the way but the best thing about being in Africa was that my wife learned to speak Swahili. Because I did too, I learned to say, in the class, we No, no, I learned to say, Nke Wangle, which is Swahili for my wife. My wife learned to say, In the class, we And she said it all the time, it was brilliant, you know. It wasn't until we were about to leave that the porter told my wife that uh, what she was actually saying was, Excuse me, uh, this man has a, I don't know, I mean, it's a cocktail. <laughs> 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 